But here's a funny thing. I don't think I've ever seen six inch tall unifoliate soybeans. Right. Look at that. And this is what you were talking about, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a, I'm gonna pull it. No, oh, oh, this is data. We're getting data off this, aren't we? That's all right, I got, I got one. Way to go. I've never seen a six inch tall unifoliate soybean. Here, 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 here's your, yeah, here's Look at your that. Beck's Practical Farm Research is here to help you turn your products and practices into profit. You've got questions, we've got answers. This is Ask PFR. So we're heading to the uh, London, Ohio PFR facility today. We've got some interesting studies as it relates to cover crops and interseeding soybeans and wheat. And we've received some questions about these studies we're doing. And so we thought this would be a great, uh, great day to go visit the folks over in Ohio at our Ohio PFR site in London to uh, cover these topics. So. Hey, look what you got there again. Oh, man. Dr. Knight, how are you? Good. Mr. Shindle, how are you? Doing good. Good to yeah, see you guys. It's beautiful weather. So, hey, one of the questions we've got through PFR, uh, we got a question this week, and it was about how do I establish a stand in a cover crop? And especially as it relates to our PFR studies. They know we've done some studies where we've planted and terminated cover crops and planted green, and then we have controls. So let's go to the cover crop study. We're standing in the middle of which trial, Tyler? Uh, this would be the cover crop termination study right here. All right, so, and you terminated this how, how soon before planting? One of the treatments was terminated about three weeks before planting, and then we have a control that where no cover crops are planted, and then we had a terminate after planting, right after planting. That's what we're looking at here. Yeah. So, any observations? Anything you would do different this year? Anything that um, helped? when you planted in green versus in terminated? I, you know, maybe nothing that I would change going into next year, but I had a lot of good advice coming into it where guys were talking about raise your row cleaners because uh, that's something you don't want to contend with. And that's what we did. We ran row cleaners on this stuff, but not in there because we didn't want it to get it all tangled up. And I would say that that was probably a good call to do that. Yep. Now, is this where you took temperature differences? Yes, we saw where cover crops had already been killed uh, was about five degrees cooler or so than the control. So that's just, you still got a little bit of biomass right, that, on the ground. Yep. Um, but then we saw 10 degrees cooler where the cover crops were still green. Really? So, so tell me why you like the cooler temperatures. Well, we know our nodules are gonna work better in cooler soils. So if we can get our nodules producing more nitrogen, we've got more yield potential, theoretically. Yep. So yep. hopefully once we, um, once our plants are a little bigger, start forming trifoliates, we can look at the nodules and see. If you look, so we do use corn in Indiana, in the Atlanta facility. Um, slugs got got a hold of it, and they really, they really, where we planted into the standing rye, whoo, man, it's um, it's tough. I mean, the slugs sure. really did a lot of damage in there. Right when we were getting ready to leave to come here, I got a call from Kentucky, and they're fighting that same battle with their, um, in their cover crop studies down there, is the, the slugs have just, just ravished their stand. So what about, planting soybeans into wheat. What are the uh, challenges there? How much do we damage the wheat? Let's go take a look at that then. So the question was, People saw our video where we posted online interseeding soybeans into wheat, and they wanted to know, hey, what are we, what are we doing? What are we testing? So we're, we're testing two different timings, right? Comparing it to standard system, then buy soybeans by themselves. So we interseeded in 15 inch rows at FEEX 7. Then we interseeded at FEEX 10.5. So we've got just a uh, soybean crop only planted mm -hmm. roughly April, um, it would have been April 18th. 18th. And these first, were these planted at the same time, the first? Correct. So this is the first, this is the first planting into the wheat planted at the same time with just the soybeans planted by themselves. And then this is the second later planting into wheat. So Feeks 7, Feeks 10.5 ish. Correct. Okay, I'm, I'm betting on that one. 
<laughs> and this is what won last year, just planting soybeans by themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it beat it beat doing wheat plus double crops. It beat that system. It beat wheat by itself, obviously. It beat both of our interseeding entries. But we wanted to give it another shot. Well, you know what? That's a beautiful thing. We can do the research for the farmer. Yep. And and we can learn for him, right? I mean, that really is. A, but again, I think we're learning. There's probably a better way to do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if anybody has a better suggestion or has an idea to try to make this work or you have made it work, please uh, comment on hashtag SPFR and we'll uh, think about trying it next year. Yep, so thanks for joining us on this edition of Ask PFR. I'm Jim Schwartz, Jason Gayheimer from our Atlanta office with Tyler Schindel and Dr. Alexandra Knight here in London. Appreciate uh, your comments. Keep giving us your, uh, your questions. Don't forget to like or subscribe or comment below using the hashtag AskPFR. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.